This week just exploded with breakthroughs. Claude's latest upgrade takes coding and reasoning to a new level. DeepMind's Genie 3 generates real-time three-dimensional worlds you can actually explore. And OpenAI released two massive open-weight models you can run on your own machine. And right as all that dropped, GPT-5 officially launched four brand new versions with insane reasoning speed and agentic power. It's the biggest week in AI we've seen yet, and everything just changed. All right, let's start with Claude Opus 4.1. This update makes a quiet entrance, but it brings real upgrades if you're dealing with code, building agents, or tackling tasks that demand strong reasoning. This version builds on Opus 4, but it hits a new benchmark on SWE Bench Verified, 74.5%, which is the kind of test that tells you whether an AI can actually fix real-world code, not just toy examples. That score alone puts it ahead of a lot of what's out there right now. And it's a clear sign that Anthropic is refining Claude to be more than just a language model that sounds smart. Developers who've tested it notice that it's handling code changes in large projects with precision. Instead of rewriting entire sections unnecessarily or introducing bugs by accident, it's able to isolate the actual issue and adjust only that. GitHub confirmed that Claude is better now at multi-file code refactoring, and Rakuten's engineering team said Claude has become their go-to for day-to-day -day debugging. Windsurf even said this new version performs about one standard deviation better than the previous one, which is the same leap they saw when moving from Sonnet 3.7 to Sonnet 4. In other words, it's noticeable. Everything else stays compatible. Same pricing, same API endpoint. You just use the new model ID and you're set. For those working with Claude code, Amazon Bedrock, or Vertex AI on Google Cloud, Opus 4.1 is already there. No migration stress. One key upgrade is the hybrid reasoning ability. This means you can tell Claude how much thinking time to use. You can go quick and cheap or give it more room to reason if you're working on something complex. That's especially useful when you're training agents or using Claude in workflows that involve long multi-turn decisions. Benchmarks like TAU Bench took advantage of this feature by letting Claude extend its internal reasoning across 64,000 tokens and it performed better when it had more room to plan. There's more attention to detail now too. The model can track data, follow threads, and analyze documents with stronger focus. It was tested on policy simulations with added prompts that encourage step-by-step -step problem solving. On those longer tasks, Claude was allowed to think for up to 100 steps, and most tasks still wrapped up well before that. It's now a lot more capable in that agent thinking zone than it used to be. They also made sure nothing broke when it comes to safety. Claude 4.1 sticks to Anthropic's Safety Level 3, which is their internal standard, and it passed all the usual evaluations. It rejects almost every harmful request, 98.76% of the time, and doesn't randomly refuse normal ones either. Over-refusals are extremely low, around 0.08%. When tested for prompt injections and trick questions, it held steady. The whole upgrade went through voluntary safety evaluation, even though Anthropic considers this release incremental. This kind of progress is exactly why learning AI today isn't just smart, it's urgent. In 2025, over 51% of companies already use AI. Microsoft, Amazon, Google all have laid off thousands because of it. 40% of people fear AI will take their job this year. But here's what most miss. They're also hiring people who understand AI, can use it, and can build with it. For businesses, freelancers, and creators, AI isn't optional anymore. It's leverage. Those who master it now will outrun the rest. That's why this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, you can join the two-day AI Mastermind, 16 hours with expert mentors learning 10-plus powerful AI tools going from rookie to pro. Normally $895, but I've partnered with OutSkill, an AI education platform, to give away 1,000 free seats for the next 72 hours. Over the past year, attendees have landed raises, earned promotions, and even launched AI startups, pulling in thousands each month. You'll learn prompt engineering, top tools like Make.com, Agentic Hub, and Claude using AI in Excel and presentations developing AI agents, automating work, and building AI-powered apps and websites. No matter your role, people from all backgrounds loved it. 
The training runs 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. both days, and if you sign up now, you'll get $5,000 in bonuses, including the Prompt Bible, a money-making roadmap, and a personalized AI toolkit builder. Grab your free seat now, links in the description, and join their WhatsApp group for updates. Now, over at DeepMind, they've been busy with something very different, Genie 3. This one is a world model, and it moves AI into a new kind of space entirely. Instead of just generating static videos or answering prompts, Genie 3 can build fully interactive three-dimensional environments in real time based on just a text description. You give it a prompt and it generates a scene you can explore at 24 frames per second in 720p and keeps it going for several minutes. And these aren't just pretty scenes, they're playable, consistent, and persistent. You can walk down a path, come back to the same spot a minute later, and the world remembers what was there. That memory extension is something that most AI-generated simulations struggle with. In the past, you'd get maybe 30 seconds before things started falling apart. With Genie 3, the environment holds together and reacts to what you do, even when you backtrack or interact with the same objects again. There's a lot going on under the hood. The model is generating every single frame on the fly while constantly referencing past actions and conditions. That includes terrain, weather, movement, and visual consistency. It does this through an auto-regressive pipeline that refreshes the entire trajectory of what's happened so far every frame. That lets it account for things like agent movement, changed lighting, and updated user input without breaking the environment. Examples from the research preview include scenes like driving a rover through volcanic terrain, walking through Victorian streets with portals to desert worlds, and swimming behind a jellyfish through hydrothermal vents. Some scenes are grounded in natural physics, like a hurricane in Florida with wind, water, and environmental damage. Others are surreal, like an emerald red gorilla walking past moss-covered mansions with a silk parasol. Genie 3 can handle both extremes. You can also prompt specific events mid-session, change the time of day, add characters, trigger a storm. That kind of interaction gives you the ability to not just move through the world, but shape it as it runs. It turns simulation into something far more flexible, perfect for agent training or dynamic storytelling. They've tested Genie 3 with their SEMA agent too. The model doesn't know what the agent wants to do, it just reacts to the moves it makes and simulates the outcome. That's ideal for training agents in unpredictable scenarios and testing how they respond when the environment isn't fixed. Genie doesn't have to understand the goal, it just needs to show what would happen. Of course, Genie 3 isn't limitless. The interaction duration is still capped at a few minutes, action options for agents are limited, and modeling multiple independent agents in the same world is still a work in progress. It also can't recreate real-world geography with perfect accuracy, but for what it is, AI-generated, interactive environments created in real time, it's pushing into territory no other public model has reached. Right now, Genie 3 is available as a limited research preview. Only a small group of creators and academics have access. DeepMind says this helps them gather feedback and stress test the system safely before opening it to a wider audience. And considering how powerful this tech could be, that approach makes sense. Now, by the time this video goes live, GPT-5 will most likely already be out. OpenAI had been teasing it for days and then GitHub accidentally leaked the whole thing early. There are four versions, GPT-5 for advanced reasoning, GPT-5 mini for lightweight setups, GPT-5 nano for ultra low latency, and GPT-5 chat, tailored for rich multimodal conversations in enterprise tools. The leaked post also mentioned that these models can handle complex coding tasks with minimal prompting and include enhanced agentic capabilities. We'll cover GPT-5 in more depth once we've had a chance to test it ourselves and see what it's actually capable of in real-world conditions. For now, it's clear OpenAI's aiming to push things a step further on every front. Reasoning, speed, and flexibility Meanwhile, OpenAI also decided to go in a completely different direction this week by releasing their new open weight models, GPT OSS 120B and GPT OSS 20B. These are large scale reasoning models you can download and run yourself. No API lock in, no closed sandbox. You get the full weight files ready to use under an Apache 2 license. The larger model runs on a single 80 gigabyte GPU and delivers performance close to OpenAI's O4 Mini. 
The smaller one works with just 16 gigabytes of RAM and still matches scores from O3 Mini. And these aren't scaled down toys, they're seriously capable. On benchmarks like AIME and Healthbench, they either match or even outperform some of OpenAI's earlier proprietary models. Both models use a mixture of experts' transformers set up with grouped multi-query attention. The 120B version has 117 billion parameters in total, but only activates 5.1 billion per token. The 20B version activates 3.6 billion per token. That keeps memory usage down while keeping performance high. They also support context lengths up to 128,000 tokens. They were post-trained using the same methods OpenAI used for the O series models, including supervised fine tuning and high compute reinforcement learning. Developers can choose the level of reasoning effort depending on the task, low, medium, or high, just by modifying the system prompt. They support tool use out of the box, function calling, browsing, step-by-step, -step, chain of thought reasoning, structured outputs, the whole deal, you can drop them straight into agentic workflows. They even showed how tightly these models follow instructions. In one prompt, developers told the model it could never say the word five, so instead of saying it directly, the model started replacing it with random decimals like 4.9, even when the user clearly meant to count to five. It's a strange but useful example of just how literally these models will follow system level rules. The models are available now on Hugging Face and come pre-quantized. You can run them locally on Apple Silicon, through PyTorch, or even on Windows machines using Onyx Runtime. Microsoft already pushed optimized builds of the 20B model for Windows, and several platforms like Olama, LM Studio, Azure, VLLM, and AWS have integration ready. There's no friction getting them up and running. OpenAI also launched a red teaming challenge with a half million dollar prize pool to help researchers uncover new safety issues in the models. It's clear they're hoping these open weight releases don't just expand access, but also raise the bar for how safely open models can be deployed and monitored. So between GPT-5's official release, the new open weight models going public, and the ecosystem support already built around them, OpenAI just put a lot of new firepower in developers' hands this week. What stood out to you the most this week? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to hear your take. Make sure to subscribe. Drop a like if you enjoyed this breakdown, and thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.